Hey fam, what's up? It's CJ and we are here today to talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville. They gave us another good episode this evening. But before we talk about it, as always, make sure that you like this video. Also, please subscribe to my channel. I do want to thank you all really quickly. I have finally broken the 100 subscriber mark. I know that may not be a lot to some, but it's huge to me. So I do want to thank everybody that has subscribed to my channel thus far. And I look forward to hopefully entertaining you all and making you want to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe. But again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. I know that may be, like I said, small to a lot, but to me, it means everything. And I look forward to growing and going with y'all. But now that we got that out of the way, this episode was season two, um, episode 10. The My DVR had it wrong. It went back to season one, episode 10. So I would have been giving y'all wrong information had I not already known in my mind that it was the second season. But anyway, this episode, they called it Mar Telling It Like It Is. So we know that this episode had a whole lot to do with Mr. Martell Hope. But the episode didn't start with him. It started with Maurice and Marceau. They have taken MJ and Monster, their two sons, out to this 10 acres of land that they purchased. Now, the Scots, they, well, the Scott men have this vision of them almost, I guess, being on like a compound like a family compound where the family gets on this land they build and is theirs and it's something that they can pass down to generations and generations because we all know the importance of owning land and especially owning land in america as black people and that's a really big deal and it was really dope to see the kids didn't really seem too interested in it at all and maurice you know, he says that Kimmy is not really on board with this because she, from what he told him, he told him that Kimmy wasn't on board because, you know, of, I guess, how slow Marceau is as far as, you know, his building of his restaurant or his cigar bar, I'm sorry, and other contract projects that he's been a part of. So Kimmy is just not on board. That's what Maurice told Marceau. And Marceau has tasked Maurice, you know, to kind of getting his wife on board. But we go on from them and then we move on to Melody. And Melody says that since Martel doesn't want to leave the house, he doesn't want to move out. He feels like they should just kind of swap between the two, leave the kids at the main house which is where he is and he and melody every two weeks just switch up they just switch houses and melody does not want to do that nobody in their mi right mind would want to do that so she's not a part of that at all so she decides to get help from destiny who is a real estate agent also or she may be a realtor i'm not sure um, but she is helping her find her own home because she doesn't want a part of any of those games that Martell is trying to play. Now, she seems to fall in love with the very first home that Destiny has shown her. They may have looked at other houses, but, or this just might've been to make it look like something, but it was a very beautiful home. Um, she has plenty of space and she says that she and her kids kind of deserve this after you know this upgrade and she says she deserves it especially in every sense of the term so i'm guessing she's talking about not only a new home but a new man as well but we'll find out more about that later on now destiny while they're looking at the home destiny does tell melody okay martel tried to lead me to believe that you were cheating on him and Melody just says, that's absurd. He's just trying to make me seem like a bad guy because he was out doing what he was doing and is out there for the world to see. And she mentions that he's trying to take full custody. Destiny believes that that is just outrageous as well, as does everybody in this episode, it seems. 
but she likes her house. She is ready to sign the contract. She's ready to move in. She is just ready for a new start. So then we go on to Letitia and Letitia goes to visit Kimmy. Now we are still in the midst of this pandemic, of course, and they're very happy to see one another. And when Letitia gets there, Letitia needs a drink. Letitia says, I have been at home with three children. You think I came here for some lemonade? Where is the tequila? We need to add some tequila to this drink, which I know exactly what she means. Being at home with your children all day, every day, you're just in constant mommy mode. She was looking at this as a chance to unwind. She got away from the house, even though she just went to see her sister-in-law, she's still away from the house and she wants to kind of turn up. So they grab a bottle out of the cabinet, go outside to sit and they're going to chit chat. Well, Kimmy mentions that, you know, well, first of all, Kimmy, we know is a nurse and she kind of talks about being on the front line and then she has to come home and she has to take care of the house because she's in a house full of men. So when she gets there, she is cooking and cleaning and everything else because Maurice, although he is a little more likable than Marceau, Maurice and his brother both are in that mind frame that the woman needs to fulfill certain roles in the home. And I guess, you know, they are supposed to do the cooking, the cleaning and the taking care of the children or whatnot, but she seems to be okay with it. But she does make mention to Letitia that, yeah, those are definitely brothers. They, they think a lot alike in a lot of, in a lot of ways, but Kimmy mentions, you know, well, I'm sorry, Letitia, she brings up that land again and Kimmy doesn't really want to be a part of that. Kimmy just kind of says, well, can we still be family, you know, in our separate spaces? Kimmy doesn't want to be that close to that much of the family. You know, she doesn't want to be a part of Scott Manor. And that's what they decided that they were going to call it. She does not want to be a part of that. Um, they are all on board obviously. And she just feels like she needs her privacy. She needs a little separation from them. And this makes Letitia somehow she brought up Martell visiting and she said that, you know, okay, I'm glad that Marceau, you know, may be getting his friend back or they are hashing out their issues, but she's still not open to you know, closing that chapter or mending fences with Mel. And Kimmy, of course, just kind of wants Letitia to see her part in how everything went sort of disarray a little bit. She wants her to see, you know, awry, I'm sorry, how her part caused, you know, whatever piece of the puzzle, the drama that it did and Letitia doesn't see it that way. Letitia is still on this loyalty tip. She is, she is still talking about Kimmy having her back. And I don't think that Kimmy does not have her back. Nobody thinks that Kimmy doesn't have her back, but what everybody can say is that Kimmy is honest with everybody. She tries to stay, new, stay neutral and honest with everybody. That way there's no misinterpretation. And it's just easier because if she is always being real and upfront, then nobody can say that she lied about anything or nobody can say that she's playing both sides because honestly, she's not. And Letitia is, you would think after last season or before the break, she would have had a chance to see her behavior and to see how she looked and she would just want to say, okay, um, um, you know, I'm gonna let it go. I'm not going to worry about it, but no, she now, and she's getting emotional again, getting ready to cry because Kimmy is not like girl. Yeah. It's just me and you, you know, it's us against everybody, you know, because that's not how it is. And she just wants Kimmy, at the end of the day, she just wants everybody to see the part that they played in all of this. And that's it. Now, we do 
like we talked about you know a few minutes ago melody did purchase her home and she's packing out of the old place to get ready to move into her new house as a single woman and her mom stops by you know while she's packing and everything and mel basically tells you know her mom about martel wanting to file for full custody and everything mom is another one that thinks that it's absurd and she can't believe that he's trying to pull that card now she also said that you know martel made a comment to her about being surprised that the women haven't the older women haven't talked to her basically about you know letting a man be a man and forgiving him and as long as it's not affecting your household to let him be a man that old way of thinking that a lot of women back in the day and a lot of women still do you know think today but her rebuttal was i'm surprised that you know the older men didn't sit you down and tell you that you were wrong or how to treat a woman and he said that they did talk to me but basically the only thing that they told him was he needed to make sure that he only dealt with women who had something to lose women who weren't messy and weren't gonna basically get back to his wife basically they were telling him he needed to cheat better not to become a better man but to cheat better which is how a lot of men think and they she says that the way that she found out about the mistress being pregnant was martel and melody they took the kids on a family trip they went to a beach had a great time you know as a family and things were a decent time decent enough time and he sits her down when they get back and he tells her that the mistress is pregnant so melody at that point you know she had to go she couldn't stay so this is how the divorce proceedings began this is how she went and filed for divorce now her mom says that she's kind of happy that she's starting to see the melody that she knows, you know, the strong melody, the one that's not really taking any crap, especially from Martel. And she's just glad that she's emerging into the woman that she knows her daughter is. So we see Martel. Martel is at his office and he's meeting with his broker. I believe his name was Chris. And they're talking about this project where they're developing on the 47 acres that Martel and Melody, I guess, bought that they were all supposed to do the comeback, you know, project on in the beginning. And that whole project just went left. And it, what ended up happening was nobody trusted anybody they couldn't agree on anything and so the holts just ended up buying the land out from under everybody and they all it just the the comeback project just was no more it was just a mess and they, they probably shouldn't have tried it sounded like a decent enough project and what they were trying to do they were trying to build you know the homes and build up this neighborhood or build up this area and it just did not happen so they had another project on that land and martel was supposed to be the face of it well some investors i guess who wanted to buy some of the land got word of him i guess his infidelities the divorce just how messy everything has been and they have decided to back out and or to make him no longer the face of the project so he was in his feelings about that and his friend slash broker was basically telling him look you need to get this under control you can't be out here thinking that you're going to be this big time businessman and part of your image is based on family and you're out here basically crapping it away and so he doesn't want to hear it he looks at his friend as being negative just because He's not agreeing with him and he is still telling anybody that will listen. Well, Melody was cheating on me, which is why I was cheating on her. He 
he is still stuck on this. She was cheating. And I know she was cheating because she wasn't fulfilling her needs with me. And I don't think he ever once stopped to think that maybe she didn't want to be intimate with him because she knew he was out there being unfaithful. And a lot of times that could be a turnoff for a woman knowing that you're out here dipping your thing in any and every body and you expect for her to want to lay with you in a sexual way. A lot of times that'll dry a woman right up and she won't want anything to do with you. But he just feels like, no, nah, she wasn't sleeping with me because she was sleeping with somebody else. And he never once will accept the fact that, okay, I've been out here doing her wrong and it has turned her off and she's just not attracted to me anymore. But needless to say, you know, his friend thinks he's crazy because he told him that he was going to ask for full custody. His friend thinks he's crazy. He knows that well, he says that children belong with their mom and you trying to take them is not cool. Uh, Martel just thinks that he's just being negative and not really a friend because a friend would be supportive. And he just, he just going to continue talking about how Melody was just lacking. So then we go to the Scots, Marceau and Letitia. They're at, I guess, the Schultz office and they're talking and she tells him that she feels like, you know, she may have to distance herself from Kimmy because she feels like Kimmy is back on this thing of not being loyal to her. And Mar so gives her some really good advice. He just tells her, OK, you can approach this two ways. One of two ways you can, like you said, distance yourself back off or you can remain the friend that you would want in somebody else. He said something like that. It wasn't terrible advice, but she basically wants verbal reassurance. She just wants to hear, just like she told him how I need to hear you say, I love you, you know, as my husband, I need her to say, I got your back. I'm on your side as my friend. And so it, and it sounds like she, she wants her to be her friend right or wrong, but Letitia, it just cannot, it, it just can't, it can't be that way all the time. A real friend is going to call us on our stuff. They're going to tell us when we right and they're going to tell us when we wrong. And if we're real friends, we have to accept that. But while they're talking, Mama Wanda comes in with her pink curl ponytail and she put a little purple in it this time. And she is serving us 1999 realists realness and i love it it's, it's crazy but she tells them that she has herself a man she was in town you know handling business and that she's got a man and marceau was like you got a man but you got a ring on your finger too so mama wanda tells us that yes she is married but she's separated and has been separated for five years and that she now has a boyfriend and Marceau is not letting her live that down because she's the same one who was getting on his head about the possibility of having another woman and cheating and blase blase. But you are her tipping and dipping too. So what's tea? What's tea? But anyway, you know, Wanda asked them if they heard about Martel and this baby that he supposedly has on the way. Letitia says, we are minding our business. We are not in that. I don't want them to be able to say the Scott said X, Y, Z or nothing. That's their problem. We're going to let them handle it. So she has the nerve to preach to Marceau about Martel and how Martel is, you know, basically sinning and all this other stuff stuff and it's just so funny because he is really getting a kick out of being able to call her on her stuff he's like no you're sinning you know you sinning too you know you got a whole husband over here but you got a man he was like how does that work and she was telling him that he basically better not put her daughter in that situation he better not go out and cheat and make no babies and all this other stuff but she was saying because she knows that birds of a feathers flocks together like everything was just plural but we know mama wanda she 
she going to add some asses and she going to take some away. But we got to love her. So then we go back to Kimmy. She is with Maurice. And this time they're at Maurice's office space. And she just kind of wants him to stay within budget because he's getting a little out of hand trying to compete with his brother. He wants his office to look better. He wants to have more stuff. He just wants to beat his brother in, in that way. But Kimmy, you know, she basically tells him that she's tired of Letitia questioning her loyalty because Letitia by now ought to know that we are sister-in-laws. I automatically share that bond with you. And, you know, if push came to shove, you know, your family, but if you wrong, you wrong. If you right, you right. But She's just tired of all the madness and she's torn because she wants to throw her son Jalen a graduation party. They didn't get to do it because of COVID. But now that I guess things are becoming a little more lax, she wants to throw him a party, but she doesn't want to invite the wrong combination of people because she knows how that can go when you get certain people together. And I just think if you invite anybody and you invite Wanda, it's automatically going to be some explosions. But she wants to invite Martel and Melody, but she doesn't want to necessarily invite them together. So it's just a big old mess. But she says that her son is kind of frustrated because he's not really working in the area that he wanted to work in when he graduated. He wanted to invest you know having investment properties he wanted to do the airbnb deal but things kind of fell flat in that area at least they were halted because of covid and how it put a stop to a lot of things and so right now like she told him you are gonna work so he is working but he's just kind of working a job because his mom says if you're gonna be in this house you're gonna be working so Maurice doesn't necessarily agree with that because he feels like she should at least let him go and find some sort of entry level job that can get him in the door to work, you know, the career that he wants. And it's just not that easy. Like she's trying to get him to see, you know, people aren't just hiring at this time and you're an entrepreneur. So it's easy for you to say, but he doesn't have anything right now. And right now he needs to just go and work a nine to five until a door opens for him. Now we then go to the last scene and this is Melody. You know, she's outside playing with the kids at the new house and then up pops Martel. He just pops up at her place, comes up the driveway. He starts out kind of cordial and she is just like, you know, Martel, you can't, you can't be popping up at my house. And he's like, well, I can pop up wherever my kids are. Mm -mm. It don't work like that, Martel. Especially not a house. Even if you did pay for the house, you still don't have that right. But she needs to put a stop to that now because that's going to make him then you know think that he can do it all the time and what if she starts seeing somebody you know it's just the disrespect i mean it's just it's unreal so they start arguing and he is still talking about you know you were cheating and she was like where where was i cheating how was i cheating she was like martel i didn't start talking to anybody until you and i we're not together anymore. And so he was like, but we still married. We still married. She was like, I, I, in my mind, I haven't been married to you in a long time. So he now wants to try. I think, I don't think Melody was cheating because if there was some dirt to spray, he would have sprayed it a long time ago. I still stick by that. I just think that he is just mad that she hasn't taken him back like she has in the past. I mean, too much damage has been done. There is way too much water under the bridge at this point. There is a whole new life that you created with someone else. Y'all are done. 
So they're still arguing and this argument gets pretty heated and it gets heated enough to the point where production has to step in and you know, they're kind of standing because Melody is getting very animated. They sent the kids in the house earlier, thank God, because you know, it was getting loud and he, I don't like, he's like, yeah, go in the house because you know, your mom is about to start yelling. You know, your mom is about to start getting loud. He's, you know, planting these seeds in their brain, trying to make it seem like their mom is just this irrational person. And he is just, you know, manipulating and, and just being manipulative. And it's, he is something else with himself. I'm not a psychiatrist or anything. I'm not going to call him this narcissist or this sociopath, but I will say that man has problems. That man has a lot of problems. And, you know, she acknowledges that, yes, Martel is a very, very good liar and a manipulator, but it will no longer work with me. So she is definitely done. At least I hope she's done. Um, I can't tell them what to do in their marriage, you know, um, Nobody likes to see a marriage break up, but nobody likes to see a person humiliated and taken advantage of either. But their drama is definitely going to unfold before our eyes this season. It's definitely going to continue to heat up and get physical. But I don't know if I left anything out or if there's anything that y'all want to talk about. You know, like I said, drop it in the comments. We will talk about it. And I thank you if you have made it this far. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. And have a great rest of your weekend. Peace.